Have mercy on me, O God, for people assail me. They fight me all day long and oppress me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Friends, as we gather this morning on this Monday of the fifth Sunday, a fifth week of Lent, let us pause for a moment as we humbly confess our sins. I confess to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers, brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in, sin, in my, my thoughts and in my words, words in what, what I have done, done and in what I have failed, failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters. Pray, pray for me to the Lord our God. God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. O God, by whose wondrous grace we are enriched with every blessing. Grant us so to pass from former ways to newness of life that we may be made ready for the glory of the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Daniel. <clears throat> In Babylon, there lived a man named Joachim, 
who married a very beautiful and God-fearing woman, Susanna, the daughter of Hilkiah. Her pious parents had trained their daughter according to the law of Moses. Joachim was very rich. He had a garden near his house, and the Jews had recourse to him often because he was the most respected of them all. That year, two elders of the people were appointed judges, of whom the Lord said, wickedness had come out of Babylon from the elders who were to govern the people as judges. These men, to whom all brought their cases, frequented the house of Joachim. When the people left at noon, Susanna used to enter her husband's garden for a walk. When the old men saw her enter every day for a walk, they began to lust for her. They suppressed their consciences. They would not allow their eyes to look to heaven and did not keep in mind just judgments. One day, while they were waiting for the right moment, she entered the garden as usual with two maids only. She decided to bathe, for the weather was warm. Nobody else was there except the two elders, who had hidden themselves and were watching her. Bring me oil and soap, she said to the maids, and shut the garden doors while I bathe. As soon as the maids had left, the two old men got up and hurried to her. Look, they said, the garden doors are shut and no one else can see us. Give in to our desire and lie with us. If you refuse, we will testify against you that you dismissed your maids because a young man was there with you. I am completely trapped, Susanna groaned. If I yield, it will be my death. If I refuse, I cannot escape your power. Yet, it is better for me to fall into your power without guilt than to sin before the Lord. Then Susanna shrieked, and the old men also shouted at her, as one of them ran to open the garden doors. When the people in the house heard the cries from the garden, they rushed in by the side gate to see what had happened to her. At the accusations of the, by the old men, the servants felt very much ashamed. They never had any such thing ever said about Susanna. When the people came to her husband, Joachim, the next day, the two wicked elders also came, fully determined to put Susanna to death. <clears throat> Before all the people, they ordered, send for Susanna, the daughter of Hilkiah, the wife of Joachim. When she was sent for, she came with her parents, children, and all her relatives, all weeping. In the midst of the people, the two elders raised, rose up and laid their hands on her head. Through tears, she looked up to heaven, for she trusted in the Lord wholeheartedly. The elders made this accusation. As we were walking in the garden alone, this woman entered with two girls and shut the doors of the garden, dismissing the girls. A young man who was hidden there came and lay with her. When we in a corner of the garden saw this crime, we ran towards them. We saw them lying together but the man we could not hold because he was stronger than we. 
he opened the doors and ran off. Then we seized her and asked who the young man was, and she refused to tell us. We testified to this. The assembly believed them, since they were the elders and judges of the people, and they condemned her to death. But Susanna cried aloud, O eternal God, you know what is hidden. You are aware of all things before they come to be. You know that they have testified falsely against me. Here I am, about to die, though I have done none of the things with which these wicked men have charged me. The Lord heard her prayer. As she was being led to the execution, God stirred up the Holy Spirit of a young boy named Daniel, and he cried aloud, I will have no part in the death of this woman. All the people turned and asked him, What is this you are saying? He stood in their midst and continued, Are you such fools, O children of Israel, to condemn a woman of Israel without examination and without clear evidence? Return to court, for they have testified falsely against her. Then all the people returned in haste. To Daniel, the elder said, Come, sit with us and inform us, since God has given you the prestige of old age. But he replied, Separate these two far from each other, that I may examine them. After they were separated one from the other, he called one of them and said, How you have grown evil with age. Now have your past sins come to term, passing unjudged sentences, condemning the innocent, and freeing the guilty, although the Lord says, The innocent and the just you shall not put to death. Now then, if you were a witness, tell me under what tree you saw them together. Under a mastic tree, he answered. Daniel replied, Your fine lie has cost you your head, for the angel of God shall receive the sentence from him and split you in two. Putting him to one side, he ordered the other one to be brought. Daniel said to him, Offspring of Cana, not of Judah, beauty has seduced you, lust has subverted your conscience. This is how you acted with the daughters of Israel, and in their fear they yielded to you. But a daughter of Judah did not tolerate your wickedness. Now then, Tell me under what tree you surprise them. Under an oak, he said. Daniel replied, Your fine lie has cost you also your head, for the angel of God waits with a sword to cut you in two so as to make an end of you both. The whole assembly cried aloud, Blessing God, who saves those who hope in him. They rose up against the two elders, for by their own words, Daniel had convicted them of perjury. According to the law of Moses, they inflicted on them the penalty they had plotted to impose on their neighbor. They put them to death. Thus was innocent blood spared that day. The word of the Lord.
Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Even, Even though, though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. Even, Even though, though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. He guides me in right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. With your rod and your staff that give me courage. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked man, says the Lord, but rather in his conversion, that he may live. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, but early in the morning he arrived again in the temple area, and all the people started to come to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? They said this to test him, so that they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, Let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again he bent down and wrote on the ground. And in response, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with the woman before him. And Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, do not sin any more. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. I think it's fascinating how these readings, the first reading from Daniel, which uh, is, uh, is a really powerful, dramatic story, um, is parallel with the gospel story of Jesus with the woman who had been accused. You know, it occurs to me that, the <clears throat> that uh, in the gospel story, uh, it's really the scribes and the Pharisees upon whose uh, heads judgment has come and not the woman because she may have been falsely accused by the scribes and the Pharisees. They made her stand in the middle and they said to Jesus, 
This woman was caught in the very act of adultery. Were they lying? It's possible. Were they bringing a false charge against her? That could be, because Jesus bent down and wrote on the ground, and he was probably writing the, uh, the charges against not the woman, but against the scribes and the Pharisees. And so the important lesson here is never to bear false witness against your neighbor, because that is something that is most contemptible to God and something that brings down the greatest judgment upon us from heaven. And so uh, we heard in such powerful manner uh, what happened, what befell those two wicked elders who did bear false witness against a completely innocent woman. Um, they uh, uh, were not spared uh, the ultimate punishment. Um, and so let's ask the Lord to give us hearts of mercy, not of judgment. Judgment belongs to God. Um, but I think there is something uh, natural in our human nature that causes us to judge people. But may we never judge unjustly. May we never uh, uh, bear false witness or even think uh, of uh, such a thing against our neighbor. But instead, uh, uh, accept and embrace our neighbor with the loving and merciful heart of our Savior Jesus Christ. You know, we're coming up soon on Holy Week. There's just one more Sunday, or well, this Sunday, of course, is Palm Sunday. Uh, we're coming close to the celebration of the Easter mysteries of the uh, celebration of Holy Week. So let's ask the Lord to help us in these remaining days of Lent to learn his ways of mercy, forgiveness, gentleness, and kindness. Let us avoid judgment, but instead, um, when we are called upon to uh, always judge justly, but with the greatest mercy, uh, as the Lord Jesus himself uh, was merciful and kind. So may the blessing of these remaining days of Lent and as we approach uh, the celebration of Holy Week um, be a special uh, time of grace for us to draw close to our Lord in prayer and to immerse ourselves in the power of his word that we may put on his heart and see others uh, with the eyes and with the heart of love and mercy and goodness. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. With hope in God's goodness, we bring our prayers to the Lord, trusting in his holy will. For all who serve the church, may God infuse them with joy and wisdom as they preach the word of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For policymakers, may God's guidance inspire in them a renewed commitment to the value of all human life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. For all who live alone or experience loneliness or separation from loved ones, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. For the community gathered here, may we be nourished by the Holy Eucharist, be strengthened in our efforts to lead others closer to Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died with hope in the promise of Christ, may God shed his mercy and peace upon them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, prayer. our prayers. To our intentions this morning, we add special prayers for healing. We pray for Jim Schultz, for Dolores, for Melissa, for Natalia. And we continue to pray for Father Paul and Deacon Brian as they recover from their uh, surgery. And for all who are in need of healing in body or in spirit at this time. 
And then we commend to the Lord all of our departed loved ones, especially those for whom our Mass is offered. Lindy Hurdle, John J. Wagner, Missy Miller, Aurelio de Guzman, and we also certainly continue to pray for the repose of the soul of Rachel Gentleman. And let's also remember uh, to pray for uh, uh, Cole Atkins, who was a young person from our parish uh, who died uh, unexpectedly, whose funeral is on Saturday. And for Cole's family in their time of grieving. And for all of our loved ones who now rest in the Lord's peace, may they rise with Christ in glory. And now let's commend ourselves and all of our loved ones living and departed to the intercession of Mary, the glorious and ever Virgin Mother of God, and greet her as we pray together. Hail Mary, Mary full of grace, grace. The, the Lord is with thee. thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. O Lord, in your mercy, we ask that you hear and answer these humble prayers. We lift up to you in faith, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Let us pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise of the Lord of his name, for our good and the of the church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that preparing to celebrate the holy mysteries, we may bring before you as the fruit of bodily penance a joyful purity of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for through bodily fasting you restrain our faults, raise up our minds and bestow both virtue and its rewards through Christ our Lord. Through him, the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who 
comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, the Lord, Lord, and confess the resurrection, resurrection until, until you come, come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop, with Geoffrey, his assistant bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, especially those for whom our mass is offered. Lindy and John, Missy, Aurelio, Rachel, and Cole, and all of our departed loved ones, welcome them into the light of your face have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Gilbert, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy, thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will, will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, this day our daily bread, bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will 
who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not willing that you should enter into my room. But only, only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Strengthened by the blessing of your sacraments, we pray, O Lord, that through them we may constantly be cleansed of our faults and by following Christ, hasten our steps upward toward you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for God's blessing. Set free from their sins, O Lord, we pray, the people who call upon you, that living a holy way of life, they may be kept safe from every trial. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us all. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Just a very brief announcement. We had scheduled a church cleaning for this Saturday, March 23rd. I've decided to cancel that because a funeral mass has been requested for Saturday morning. Uh, this is the young man who uh, passed away unexpectedly. So we're expecting a, a very large crowd in the church. For that reason, we're going to postpone the church cleaning. We'll probably do that. Well, it's close enough to Easter. We could probably do that uh, shortly after Easter. Nonetheless, I do want to have the uh, opportunity to get in there and scrub the church. It does need a bit of a, 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 a clean sweep. Um, so we'll do that some other time. But this weekend, uh, it, uh, the timing uh, ended up not being right. So we'll postpone it for this weekend. And if, any, if you know of anyone that was planning to come, please spread the word so that people don't show up and the doors are still locked. So uh, anyway, thank you for your understanding. Have a wonderful day.